Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news we're going to tell you all about Daniel Bryan trying to pull out of the Wrestlemania main event. The real reason WWE has written Charlotte Flair off television? I'm going to tell you which WWE wrestler was campaigning for more women on Wrestlemania. And an update on Ricky Starks after his horror bump on last night's episode of AEW Dynamite. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. So let's kick things off with this Daniel Bryan interview that he has conducted with BT Sports, talking about candidly about all kinds of different things, particularly relating to WrestleMania 37, including the revelation that he actually tried to get out of the match with Edge and Roman Reigns, which was, of course, the main event of night two. Direct quotation here. Uh, when Daniel Bryan was asked, when did you realize you'd be part of the main event? Brian replied, I don't know, I kept trying to get out of it. Uh, he goes on a little bit here saying, not, not to say I didn't want to be part of it, but I just thought it was such a strong main event, just the two of them. The weird thing is, WrestleMania 30 felt like it was going to be Batista and Randy Orton, right? It felt like the way with the crowd was reacting to Batista and Randy, it kind of needed me in there, right? This one didn't feel like it needed me. Uh, Brian has some more interesting points here. He talks about how detached he felt when he was coming down to the ring. An odd sense of detachment coming over Daniel Bryan as he entered for the main event in front of 20 odd thousand fans inside Raymond James Stadium. And here's another interesting quote along a similar note. Uh, he said the following, Maybe it was a sign again that it's time to let go of being a full-time wrestler. The odd detachment. I was like, whoa! I said, I'm either going to die or maybe it's a sign that this isn't it and it isn't the same type of fulfillment that it was before. He continued saying that his contract is up relatively soon and he is still trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. Now Daniel Bryan's contract, according to Fightful, is up in September. That's not long. It's like five months. Uh, Daniel Bryan has always been very honest about his wrestling future. He has always said, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. I might step away. I might do that. I've got a family now. You know, I'm married. I've got kids. It, it's a whole deal. I've got a lot going on. I'm a busy guy. Uh, so fair play to Daniel Bryan. I always appreciate how open he is about yeah. things like this. Because a lot of wrestlers will do these interviews and just gimmick it and gimmick it and work it and work it. And maybe he's doing that here and uh, we're just being worked again. Um, but yeah, respect to him. It's interesting to hear that he tried to pull out of this, the, the match because yeah. personally, I thought he improved it. So there we go. Yeah, I mean, selfishly, obviously, uh, I want to see him wrestle forever, uh, every single week on Friday Night Smackdown. But I think, you know, if he wants to switch to a part-time schedule because of those other commitments and because, you know, he had his dream taken away from him and now he just wants to, you know, be able to live his life and do wrestling as well on a sort of part-time basis, I think that's kind of fair enough. Interesting about that main event, though, because I think he, he vastly improved it. Like, yes, 100% after the Royal Rumble, I was very much into Babyface Edge versus Roman Reigns, even though we all kind of knew Roman Reigns was probably going to retain in that match. Yeah. Then the muddy, the waters kind of got muddied with, with Edge sort of switching up and stuff. But I thought on the night, it worked perfectly. Like, listen to the reaction Edge still got. It wasn't like people were like, boo this man or anything. And you had that wonderful, like, okay, Daniel Bryan is the clear baby face. Roman Reigns is the clear heel. And, you know, as much as Edge has been a bastard in, in all this and a grumpy bastard at that, he's kind of in between because you still kind of want him to win because it's still Edge coming back after winning the Rumble, at, uh, winning the Royal Rumble. But he's just a bit grit and all that. <laughs> uh, and I thought with Daniel Bryan's addition, it made me not know who was going to win that match. And I, so I thought it vastly improved it, in my opinion. But... Yeah, it's mad to think that with all the excitement around it, especially with three guys who, you know, years ago wouldn't have been even involved in the conversation of WrestleMania, let alone the, the main event because of their, you know, checkered medical history. It, it, it's amazing to think that that's what we got. I thought it was a, a brilliant night two main event. And uh, actually, as disappointing as I was that Daniel Bryan didn't win the big one at WrestleMania again, I think it actually works really well. And I'm excited to see where it goes next. For example, this week on Friday Night Smackdown after... Roman Reigns negged Cesaro last week, Andy. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Exactly. Uh, right, let's move on to Charlotte Flair. She was suspended. She was given an $100,000 <laughs> fine this week after attacking a referee on Monday Night Raw. 
And we've discovered, thanks to friend of the channel, Alex McCarthy, who reported on Wrestling Daily, the real reason she has been written off television. And it's because she can, so she can undergo a undisclosed dental procedure. No word how long this is gonna take, but basically she's not expected to miss a lot of time. I love a good, oh, you can't do that, you suspended storyline. And I particularly enjoyed Charlotte Flair's tweet with this, with her other half, uh, Andrade, tweeting, what will I ever do while suspended? <laughs> Yeah, just oh, hanging out. There's a photo of me and Andy doing that when we're not doing the news, but you'll never see it. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon for that one. Uh, $100 a month. Sign up. Um, yeah, fair play. Uh, I'm glad there there was like a reason to, to do this storyline rather yeah. than just having her come back and go away uh, uh, straight away. But you'd fancy Charlotte Flair to be back on our screens soon. She has only just returned. Uh, so yes, fair play to her, getting her twofers sorted out. Interesting that this is in the middle of a storyline with Asuka as well, who had one of her teeth knocked out yeah. while wrestling uh, Shayna Baszler recently. So good dental coverage in WWE, evidently, if these people are able to solve these problems and get back to work very, very quickly. And I realise the irony of a British YouTube channel reporting on teeth stir, but still. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, brother. Timothy Thatcher. Uh, let's go. <laughs> let's move on. Uh, let's talk about the WWE wrestler campaigning for a greater woman's presence at WrestleMania 37. Who do you think it was? Natalia. Uh, Natalia went to bat for the division. Um, this is a report here from Fightful Select talking about how there wasn't, for the second year in a row, there wasn't a WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal this year. And the tag team turmoil match that played out on night one, well, it was originally going to go down on the Go Home Smackdown. But Natalia wanted greater representation. She wanted more women to be on that card because without tag team turmoil, there's like 10 people missing from night one. Uh, no Battle Royal, it's like 30 people missing. Um, she kind of campaigned for it got the match put on to night one. She and Tamina eventually won that match and then wrestled Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax on night two for the tag team titles. They lost that match. Uh, but hey, look, it's just a nice story about Natalia being a nice person. So fair play to her for getting them on the card. A uh, bunch of people wouldn't have been on the show. Uh, Naomi, Lana, uh, who else was in that match? Mandy Billy Rose, Dana Brooke, Billy Kay, Carmella, the Riot Squad. Natalia's a very nice person. Good stuff, thumbs up. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might have this impulse reaction of like, oh, well, the, the tag team turmoil was a bit crap and the tag match didn't see a title change, it was kind of pointless. That's not on Natalia, that's on WWE's crap booking. It's great, it's lovely to see Natalia doing this campaigning for more women because they should be on the card. Yeah. And you know what? They don't have to fight over titles, men, or if, if you're going to try and snatch a men's storyline, taking each other's eyes out. Just have them have feuds. <laughs> like, the men have feuds. It's really it's simple and straightforward. And like you say, there was so much talent uh, that would have missed out on that. And there was still so much. Bailey just getting pied off by the NWO and the Bella Twins. I don't know why they, she couldn't just have had a match. But still, yeah, great to see Natalia doing that. And this sort of thing should absolutely be fully supported. Uh, let's conclude today's stories uh, with an update following AEW Dynamite. Uh, the opening match saw Ricky Starks take on Hangman Page. And midway through the match, uh, Ricky Starks got suplexed by Hangman Page, basically landed straight on his neck. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, we've got a good update for you uh, to tell you about here. Ricky Starks tweeting after the show, I'm good. Thank you at DDP Yoga for my flexibility. Uh, he's fine. He's still an absolute piece, Andy Murray. Uh, and he sold that ankle brilliantly in the opening match. I love him. I'm glad he's okay. Uh, but yeah, worrying times watching that match last yeah. night. Yeah, it would be a terrible, terrible, terrible shame if a man as good looking as Ricky Starks had to sit on the shelf uh, for any period of time. But it turns out he's made of rubber. Uh, <laughs> either that or DDP Yoga is just really, really, really good and really effective. So glad to hear that. Uh, it was a good match. Uh, looks like we might be getting him and Christian at the pay-per-view oh. as well. There was a little tease of that last night, which would be very, very fun. Very cool indeed. Very nice, very evil. That's the second Danhausen reference on this video two days in a row. Uh, but yes, glad to hear this. Uh, love Ricky Starks. Happy he's doing well. Whew. Yes, very good to see he's doing well. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE, of course, we want to get in touch with us. Uh, first question today comes from Chris Hendry. Chris writes, after his win this week, and presumably another big win next week against Brian Cage, yeah, Brian Cage facing uh, Hangman Page on Dynamite next week, uh, do you think we're getting Hangman versus Omega at double or nothing? And if so, Andy Murray, who wins? Yeah, this is interesting because 
Paige is clearly positioned at number one in the rankings and they make a point of emphasizing that every single week. And last week, we got the backstage segment with the Dark Order where Hangman Page didn't want to talk about anyone in the Elite and kind of ran away from the question pretty much. So it does seem to be the direction they're heading in, but it, to me, it almost feels like it's a little bit too soon for this. Mm, yeah. um, I feel like Paige's character arc still has some way to go before we come back to Omega. Uh, it was only in November, full gear, that he had that match with Omega and those issues were kind of pushed to the side a little bit. Um, for me, like Paige should be the guy who beats Kenny for the title. Yeah. And I don't know if it's time for that but it does seem like we're heading in that direction. The other title option I thought about for this pay-per-view was babyface Chris Jericho. You could run that match back with Omega with the different alignments, but Jericho kind of has to lose blood and guts, really. Um, yeah. So that creates problems as well. I, I don't know for certain where they're heading, but that's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because they're going to have, what, two, three weeks after blood and guts to, to build up Dublin, I think it's the end of yeah. May. Uh, and it would feel very expedited to have the Hangman Page, you know, like he's been in that position, like you say, as the number one contender. But I want to, you know, really wallow in that story that they've built over the last few what months, years, you could almost say. So maybe, I don't know, maybe they're going to go Moxley. He crashed a bloody car into their, their big van thing last night and said bitch <laughs> AF so maybe they're going to run that <laughs> yes, one back or, or Rich One who knows because obviously Kenny Omega's fighting Rich One at Rebellion this Sunday so exciting but I think if they do face off I'm with Andy Hangman has to be the guy to take the title off, off Omega for me and then immediately lose it to MJF uh, right second question today comes from Mike on the mic who says howdy gentlemen howdy Mike uh, what did you think of Saray's debut match versus Zoe Stark on NXT this week yeah we didn't mention this and you know a little bit more about so, well, no more, i.e. more than anything, uh, more than nothing even, which is what I knew about her before she joined. Uh, what do you think of Saray on NXT this week, Andy? Yeah, I've seen a little bit of her work in Japan as Sari uh, before coming to, to uh, over to WWE. It was, a, it was a good match. It was a solid match. Nice introduction, I think. Her opponent, Zoe Stark, is really, really yeah. solid as well. Um, she's certainly made an impact coming in and wrestling some of the bigger names in the division as well. For me, it was kind of like evidence of like how stacked the lower tiers and the middle oh. tiers of this NXT women's division are. The group of wrestlers is colossal. It's massive. You could honestly book a whole show around them every week and, and not run out of things to do, which is kind of nuts. Um, so it kind of emphasizes for me, there's a need to kind of get some people moved on maybe to Raw and SmackDown who've been yeah. there for a while so that these people have more opportunities. But Saray's going to be fine. She's going to do great. She's not as far along in her development curve as like Io Shirai was when she came in from Japan uh, or Kairi Sane. Um, but she's going to be well positioned in the company. She's already really really good she's got some nice snapping offense she works really well for someone of her inexperience very very high ceiling indeed i think she can achieve that ceiling in nxt i almost said aew there that would have been weird um but yeah <laughs> very bullish on her prospects going forward and i think her and starks are going to be big fixtures in that division in particular yeah, really, really impressed with Zoe Stark recently. I uh, love that Saito suplex as well from Saray. And, and like you say, I, I'm terrified for her, but someone like Io Shirai may well need to move on to the red or blue brand because there's just so much talent. I mean, Frankie Monet was there this week saying, yeah. well, I'll take your spot if, you, if, you, if you're busy. And we're going to get Mercedes Martinez, look, uh, looks like, versus Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah. Yes, please. Right, final question today comes from Real Soz, who says, I have a question. I'm watching AW Dark Elevation and I think I finally get Kenny Omega. <laughs> he is as good as everyone says. Who are the best wrestlers Who are the best wrestlers that took you ages to get behind, Andy? Uh, the Undisputed Era in WWE. Uh, I always liked all of the members on the indies. I liked Red Dragon, I liked Adam Cole, I liked uh, Roderick Strong. But when they came together, uh, and they were playing the stable. I was like, these guys think they're cool, but they're dorks. They're, they're, well, they're doing their gang sign. They're a bunch of like little nerds. What's going on here? But then I realized that was the point. You're not supposed yeah. to think they're cool. You were supposed to think that these are obnoxious guys who are a lot cooler in their head than they are in reality. And once I accepted that, I learned them, started appreciating characters a bit more and uh, loved them ever since, pretty much. So there you go. For my, for my sins, it's Bret Hart. I just, <laughs> wow. it was just, just before my time. Uh, and I never, you know, initially went back. I was just like, oh, great, The Rock's here, Stone Cold, Chris Jericho, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> and honestly, I feel like I sort of got him before this, but certainly that documentary about the whole Tom McGee stuff, I was like, 
now, now I truly understand Bret Hart and uh, truly more appreciative of him. But yeah, shame to admit that. Let us know yours in the comment section down below. Uh, we'll move on to today's and finally, and a nod to user pushing underscore prawn on Squared Circle, <laughs> who shared this brilliant Paul Bearer tribute that's been seen in Bristol. Uh, Andy Murray, you did the best Paul Bearer impression out of the two of us whilst we were practicing. Do you wanna, do you wanna have a go? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, we decided both of our Paul Bearers sound a little bit like Mickey Mouse. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not good. <laughs> but yes, great stuff. This uh, if you're in if you're in Bristol, make sure you go and check that out wherever the hell it is. Uh, but let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and the Dandy Boy sitting down to review AEW Dynamite a little bit later on today. Uh, plus, let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Uh, watch there. You can follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray. The H today stands for Happy Birthday to Benroy Turner's favourite wrestler, Ezekiel Jackson. <laughs> Christy's strange... just had flashbacks, hasn't he? Yeah. The final ECW champion, sweet Jesus. Take that, Raven. <laughs> this, is, this right here is what you call domination. Mm. <laughs> Happy birthday, Zico. Uh, you can follow me at Adam Wilbur. Follow us all at WhatCultureWWE. But for now, my thanks, Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon. <laughs>